Hi, my name is Dan Sokol. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about how we deal with children in lying, um, how we respond and react to it, and how we try to resolve the issue if it's repetitive and pattern in our homes. So one of the things I tell parents when I'm working with their child is uh, the story of the boy who cried wolf. And the last line of the boy who cried wolf is the old man who cons is consoling the boy after the sheep are gone says to the boy, no one believes the liar even when they're telling the truth. And this is after the sheep are gone. The boy had lied numerous times. The townspeople came out to help and they were infuriated and angered because there was no wolf. Lying induces in us a sense of frustration, fury, and anger uh, that is very powerful because to not know the truth really shakes our foundation of things and it, it has a sense of insecurity and anxiety attached to it. Now I want to talk about pattern lying with kids related to compliance um, because this is something I see a lot in my office um, and in my practice uh, with parents and children. Now an example I'll give uh, is a child who every morning has a battle about chores specifically showering and brushing his teeth. So uh, recently one morning the child showered but uh, the mom suspected he didn't brush his teeth. She said to him, did you brush your teeth? He says, yeah I did already but I'll go do it a second time. And as he's getting up to go do it the second time, mom goes in at him. You're lying to me. I hated when your father would lie like that. It's so frustrating and on and on and on and it became about the lie the issue was really rooted in the compliance the lie brought up the historical tension and this happens a lot and so this is a very repetitive thing in a lot of families and a lot of homes how do we stop it well uh, what happens is we get locked in patterns we get locked in these back and forths and we need to put a cease to them or else they just kind of continually go on. Um, so in this specific scenario, we can say, well, compliance existed, but how infuriating it existed. He lied about already brushing. Who brushes their teeth twice in the morning? Um, and she had known he hadn't brushed because she, he was downstairs the whole time with her. So we do have that kind of truth existing. It's not like uh, there was some mystery or he could have done it and he was just doing that a second time. If she had let him go and brush that second time and then when he came back she said thank you for doing what I asked and then said it really bugs me when people lie. I'm sorry that gets me so frustrated but it really bugs me. It would have had a different power a different meaning because it would have said the historical context of what the lie does but it was, would have also attached it to hey you listen to me this bothers me please remember that because that's about building empathy in kids building an understanding in them when we respond and we react in relationships whether it be with couples kids friends we're always replaying our histories we're replaying our historical interactions and our historical tensions when those are in awareness, they become less destructive and repetitive. And so by identifying the present, the here and now, the situation of the behavior that was being uh, sought for compliance or the compliance that was being sought, and then receiving that and validating that, you're separating the history and the present, but you're also saying that behavior bugged me but you complied because kids are renowned for maybe huffing when they're complying, puffing, making a comment and that's what engages the historical frustrated us, the historical frustrated adult, the tensions of our previous relationships, our parental experiences, these are the things that play out that we need to cease. So in remembering the story of the boy who cried wolf, we can tell our kids the story so they have an awareness of how people start to lose connection when there's a lot of dishonesty. But in situations that are playing out, 
We need to keep that story separate, that's in the background. Not you're a liar, no one will ever believe you. But thank you, thank you for complying. It really bugs me when people lie, because they're your building entity. Um, I, I, I know this was kind of a convoluted and a lot, a lot compacted into a little bit of time. Um, but I, I thank you for listening, I hope this was helpful. But uh, I want to summarize by saying, lying is exhausting, lying is frustrating, it induces that in us. In moments in our time, we need to stop from the reactivity of what the lie is, what it brings up for us, and what behavior are we dealing with in the present. And we can always bring the tension with the hurt of the lie to teach and build on empathy without buying into the reactivity that the lie induces in us, the fury, the anger. I thank you for your time. Um, if this video was helpful, I'm glad. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out if need be, if you're looking uh, to become a patient or you're seeking a presentation for either a school or a group. Um, I can be reached best on my website, www.danielsokol.com, D-A-N-I-E-L, Sokol.com. Thanks again. Take care.